All right, good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. And tonight I am talking about infection and autoimmunity, part two, discussing the relationship to between rheumatoid arthritis, Prevotella, and genetics. So hopefully this is of some help. In the previous discussion, I talked about Prevotella as well as Porphyromonas gingivalis. Porphyromonas gingivalis is a mouth bacteria that has been seen to be associated potentially with the specific autoimmune reaction seen in rheumatoid arthritis. So that was some pretty exciting information. And now I'm talking about a gut bacteria, Prevotella. Uh, Prevotella species, rather, um, are a wide group of bacteria that have been associated with being higher in density in rheumatoid arthritis patients. So hopefully with this, you'll get some more information regarding this relationship. So without further ado, uh, let's go through some of the background information. Uh, in essence, Prevotella species have been found to be in higher density in the mouse model of rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, the abundance of Prevotella, particularly Prevotella corpori in RA patients is higher in human studies as well. Uh, we also know that antibodies to Prevotella corpori uh, are associated with disease severity and rheumatoid arthritis, and that Prevotella corpori are associated with driving Th1 and Th17 uh, autoimmune responses or T cell differentiation would be a better way to say it. So in essence, this gut bacteria has been shown to drive immune dysregulation in rheumatoid arthritis patients. So that's another important piece of this. Also, Prevotella is seen with early disease onset in RA patients before the use of disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs like methotrexate, or uh, hydroxychloroquine or something of that nature. And hello to everyone who's joining. So that is what we know. Now, let me see here. I'm gonna flip the screen. Okay, so this article out of Lancet Rheumatology is really exciting. It's exciting because they did a great study. Uh, they used, a lot of really good data, some from the United Kingdom, some from Switzerland. They were using genetic sequencing technology from University of California, San Diego. Uh, they were sending samples to Cornell University. So it's a really nice collaborative study. And they were looking at associations between gut microbiota and genetic risk for rheumatoid arthritis in the absence of disease, a cross-sectional study. So in essence, what they were looking at is, or was, rheumatoid arthritis genetic risk, and does that genetic risk for rheumatoid arthritis affect the microbiota? So again, as I mentioned in the prelude, we have all this information looking at um, these associations between higher densities of Prevotella and the mouse model of rheumatoid arthritis, we see it in RA patients. We see this bacteria driving potentially autoimmune responses. But now let's take a step back and say, okay, for those who are genetically susceptible for rheumatoid arthritis, do they have a difference in their gut bacteria than those who don't have this genetic predisposition? So um, let me see here. And the way they composed the study was of two different varieties. They, they took twins from the United Kingdom, and these twins had no relationship to someone with rheumatoid arthritis. So the UK study looked at just twins who had an increased probability of having rheumatoid arthritis based on their genetics. They looked at 230 plus different genes, and Again, these twins in the UK study did not have a connection to an individual with rheumatoid arthritis. 
they looked at their stool, they looked at their blood. And what they ended up finding was that unequivocally with these twins that there was a higher association for them to have higher densities of Prevotella species in their microbiome. Then they also did a study in Switzerland called the Screen RA study. And these were twins, monozygotic twins, who had a first degree relative with rheumatoid arthritis. They excluded any one of these twins who had clinical rheumatoid arthritis. So basically they have a first degree relative with RA, but uh, they themselves do not have rheumatoid arthritis. Again, they looked at their stool, they looked at their blood, they did all this genetic sequencing. Again, they found this preponderance of Prevotella species in their microbiome. So that is significant. Now, moving on, this is a diagram looking at the different characteristics between the different studies. This is the UK study. Excuse me, this is the Screen RA study from Switzerland. And you can see that, for example, the ACPA positive individuals in the twin study, ACPA refers again to the citrullinated uh, peptide antibodies, which are diagnostic for rheumatoid arthritis. You can go back and watch the last video. These ACPA positive individuals were not that high, 2% of the twin study. So again, the twin study from the UK are individuals without any relation with known rheumatoid arthritis, but they have a high genetic probability of developing it. Whereas in the first degree relatives of rheumatoid arthritis patients, and again, these are twins as well, 46% of them are testing positive for CCP antibodies. So that's significant. With that being said, again, what we saw is that in both studies, there was a higher degree of Prevotella species. So what does this mean? It seems that RA genetics predispose one to an, an abundance of Prevotella. So previous studies had basically documented this association between high Prevotella bacteria in the microbiome and, you know, basically the high Prevotella species with RA. So was there a causal relationship? We didn't know. But this study is so groundbreaking because basically they showed, oh, excuse me, let me go back they showed that it is the genetics that predispose one to have the high Prevotella species for these individuals who may be likely to develop rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, we see that Prevotella species are also high in preclinical rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, again, this raises the, the question is, is it correlation or is it causation? Right now, we really don't know. There is conspicuous evidence, again, that Prevotella antibodies drive immune cell differentiation that is seen with the RA disease process, but we don't have a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, but it is, again, kind of a smoking gun that there are a high number of these species in the gut of RA patients, a high number of Prevotella are in the gut because it seems those with rheumatoid arthritis have a genetic profile that allows for the overabundance of these bacteria in their microbiome. <clears throat> there is also the question of a two-hit hypothesis. So as I mentioned last week, um, or it was on Friday, basically this association between Porphyromonas gingivalis, the mouth bacteria, and maybe Porphyromonas gingivalis is having some effect along with the Prevotella species in the gut. Or maybe it's just that Prevotella being high in the gut is just an innocent bystander. We don't know that data yet, but it would be great to see studies in the future trying to link a causal relationship potentially between Prevotella and the rheumatoid arthritis disease process or not. Uh, also, it'd be really interesting to see, can these populations of Prevotella be augmented or changed with dietary therapies or different 
you know, DMARDs, disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs, or which I think maybe has already been studied, or even certain supplements. I think these would be really interesting questions to look at because we know some of the biggest factors affecting the microbiome are what are we eating, uh, certain supplements we take, which may regulate the microbiome, et cetera. And then going on, this is a diagram I mentioned last week, which really I think illustrates it nicely demonstrating that environmental factors like smoking and hormones and infections can definitely affect the RA disease onset. We also know that periodontal bacteria, as I mentioned on Friday in the first infectious uh, autoimmune and infectious disease part one series, that this porphyromonas gingivalis is seen in periodontitis. Periodontitis is seen much higher in rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, Porphyromonas gingivalis, this bacteria, the DNA has been found in the joints of RA patients, and the Porphyromonas gingivalis bacteria is the one bacteria having the PAD enzyme, which refers to peptidyl arginine deaminases, which are involved with citrullination of proteins, which is the exact disease mechanism of RA, CCP antibodies. Go back and watch that broadcast. I know I just rushed through that. And then we also have Prevotella corpori, which is thought to maybe influence the disease process of RA. And I'll probably do more back or uh, more videos on colon cella and the salivarius bacteria. So hopefully uh, this makes some sense and send me your questions. Thank you all for joining. And let me see here. I don't think I can finish typing there. Let me say thank you for joining. And if you have any other information on this, send it to me. I'd be curious to know what your thoughts are. And I hope you all have a wonderful Monday evening. Okay. Have a good night.